I have something very powerful. I have something that I want to share with you. If you put these into action, your sobriety journey and your life overall can tremendously change. A lot of times when people want to quit drinking, they don't have the structure, they don't have the support, they don't even know where to start, and they just struggle and then give up. This structure has helped me and many others get sober, stay sober, stay away from alcohol, and better our lives. Lean times. When temptation comes knocking on your door, you have to stay the course. When those friends are inviting you out for drinks, when your family's getting together for drinks and game nights, when you're just feeling down and you have no other way you think that you can cope without drinking, you have to stay the course. Somebody asked me the other day, when you're feeling down, do you want to grab a drink? And I literally said, no, it would just make things worse. So staying the course is definitely a must. And for some of you, you might be thinking, well, she's crazy. I mean, whatever. Temptation is literally knocking on your door constantly and it's all around us. And if you really want to stay sober and you want to better your life, regardless of is that sobriety, is that weight loss, is that getting healthier in any way, shape or form, mindset, career, make a plan and screw everybody else, do what's best for you. I don't think of what alcohol did for me. I think of the way that it like ruined my life and made me feel. I think of the negatives of alcohol. That way I don't ever think like, oh my gosh, what if we just had like one drink? How fun would that be? I think of how devastating it is to my body, my mind, and what it does to my family life and just me overall and how it drags me down. If you stay on course, finding something to lean into when you're trying to quit drinking, you're starting your journey, or maybe you're having those temptations, those downfalls, something that's trying to pull you back into drinking, you have to literally stay the course as in go outside, go for a walk, find new hobbies, create those better habits, grab seltzer waters, find fun mocktails, find different supplements that help ease your issues that you're having. Maybe it's anxiety, maybe you're overstimulated. Like me, I find supplements that help me with those overstimulating times, which help me stay the course. It's just finding little things, little tweaks, better habits, getting more active, getting yourself busy, finding you know something to put in your hand. I will preach this to the day I die. Seltzer water is definitely life-changing. One of the number one reasons that keeps me on course is my children. They look up to me, they copy me when I'm working out, they try to eat healthy like me, they focus on their protein, they ask me what carbs are, they're always like, I want muscles, I wanna look like mommy, I wanna look like daddy. It's such a huge motivation to keep me sober because I don't need them seeing me picking up bottles and drinking and passed out and be like, oh, mommy did it, I can do it. Instead, I want them to look at me like I am a strong role model, I work out, I'm healthy, I want them to aspire to be like me and not like the old me, which is cringeworthy. Another thing is, is you have to get off your damn couch and go get some fresh air once in a while. It will help you tremendously sitting in your room, sitting on your couch, staring at your phone, staring at your TV. That's not gonna help you at all. Move your body, go get some fresh air. Get away from the negativity. Put that phone down, we're all guilty of it. Scrolling, comparing our lives, seeing all those people drinking, having fun, but then really they're just wasting their life away. Are they having fun or is it all just for show? Facing your troubles. Alcohol often masks our deepest pain and fears and we have to face them head on or we're never going to heal. How many times have we picked up a bottle because we're struggling with life in general, our hearts hurt, somebody died, work sucks, children are crazy, our childhood was traumatic. All these like excuses of I drink because of this and I drink because of that. But did you ever stop and look and face it? Facing the fact that maybe you're masking a deeper pain that you just are scared to deal with? Yes, we've all been there. That's what we are, we're humans. We have so many things that we just bury deep inside of us. It is hard facing those emotions. I know that. A couple of years ago, we went skydiving and I was actually not terrified because I was facing a ginormous fear. And let me tell you, that was the big, that was like the most exciting thing that I have done in years. And I faced that fear 
head on and I wanted to keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And guess what? I'm going again. Just like alcohol, I faced the fear of not wanting to put the bottle down. How would that change me? Were people still gonna like me? Was it gonna change who I was? Oh my gosh, like then all these emotions come up and I was like, oh man, like is this really what like sober life is? It's really hard. Quitting drinking, I had to face the biggest fear and that was being myself. Was my personality gonna change? Were people gonna like me still? Where was I gonna fit in? Was I gonna lose people? That's really hard because you've masked being the cool one for so long because you could drink with the boys. And I mean, who are you without a bottle in your hand? And are you nobody? Or are you going to be a very better version of yourself, a stronger version of yourself, unmasking the pains, facing the hard things, and just moving on from the bottle? The biggest fear I was masking by drinking was social anxiety. I thought that I couldn't go anywhere without drinking. I literally would just have to have a drink before I would go and then I would just be wasted when I was there because I couldn't face the social anxiety. It was hard, hard for me not drinking and putting myself out there in the world sober, but I did it. I tried to avoid social events by chugging alcohol before I would go. How many events have I wasted away, blacked out, don't remember, all because I could not face my troubles. I couldn't put myself in a situation that was uncomfortable and I just had to hide behind the bottle all the time. It's just, it's so screwed up that you have, you think that you have to rely on something so much to get you through hard times. We have to face our troubles or they're just gonna keep continuing coming back and biting us in the ass and we're never going to get through it. We're always gonna, you know, be in trouble because we're always gonna be looking for that bottom of the bottle and never getting anywhere. We're always gonna try to avoid hard things and that is not okay. If it is hard for you to go out with your friends and thinking that you can't have a drink, you have to face that and ask yourself, why can I not go out with my friends and just have a club soda and lime? You have to get over your demons and you have to push through and do not avoid the hard things just because you relied on alcohol for so long. It doesn't help. It's gonna come back and bite you. Put the bottle down and defeat the troubles that are stopping you in life. How do I face my troubles? I also see a counselor. I think that is very, very helpful for me because then I can like speak my emotions and my feelings and what is troubling me. We work through the stress and anxiety of life challenges. That is very helpful. Personal development is huge. I don't know how many times I tell you Andy Frisella literally kicks my ass every single day that I listen to him and he gives me so much more power to face my troubles and not avoid hard things. And reading absolutely pushes your confidence to the next level. We started going to church again and just putting ourselves around more uplifting people that have the same goals as us in life. You guys, my subscribers, my commenters, I, my heart and soul goes into this channel because you guys have literally been the heart and soul of my sobriety journey and I cannot thank you enough. This channel was never meant to be a sobriety channel. It actually started out as a fitness channel. My one video that so many of you loved, it kept me going, it got me here, and I realized how many people I can actually help inspire with my own story and in real time as one of my number one subscribers mentioned that he's been with me from the beginning because I was in real time. I didn't already go through it. I've been going through it and so many of you have started your journey with me and have faced your troubles and leaned into this community as well and had been months sober. How absolutely amazing is that? I mean, I am beyond blessed for all of you. Apologies, peace with others. Yes, you heard me right, peace with others. Making amends with people that you may have hurt along your drunken journey. You want to build those bridges back. I don't know, they can come with you, they can accept your apology. You're not being weak, you're just, you know, recognizing that you may have hurt somebody 
destroyed friendships or relationships, lost bonds with children. It takes a lot of strength and inner peace to make peace with others. If you have hurt people, and if that that's a way of healing, is apologizing for your behaviors. It's not showing weakness. It's just showing that, crap, yes, I made a mistake. Maybe it was for 30 years you made a mistake and you hurt your child, and your, but you want your child back in your life. You have to apologize. You have to make peace with them. Maybe it's a different scenario. I don't know, there's so many scenarios. Maybe somebody caused a bad accident and you have to face it head on and it's gonna be hard. You have to make peace with others because you're making peace with yourself. And if you don't make peace with yourself, if you don't make peace with others, then you're never gonna find peace within yourself. Clear your mind, clear your heart, and clear your soul. And hopefully these people that you apologize to will come with you. It's not a sign of weakness. It's literally just moving on. It's the next step. It's facing another step to your sobriety journey and making peace with the ones that you really hurt. During your drunken days and the days that you thought that you, you know, just needed alcohol all the time and you would screw up family functions, you'd be annoying to be around, you would choose alcohol over your family, you wouldn't leave the house because you just wanted to drink. I mean, it affects your family, it affects your friends. I mean, it's it's a big deal. So yes, you might feel weak for saying, hey, you know what, I fucked up for all those years, but it will give you such a relief to just apologize and then you can move on and those people can, you know, forgive you and come with you or you know what, that's fine if they don't. You're moving on to better things, a better life and a stronger mind. You cannot dwell on your mistakes. You just have to learn from your mistakes and move on. And if those people don't wanna accept your apology, then that's fine. Apologize if you've hurt somebody. This one's a hard one for me. So many years, there's been family feuds, people just not moving on and just going to the grave without apologies. It literally creates so much resentment. It takes that one person to apologize, to make amends and make that peace and hopefully you can move on. Make amends and improve that relationship, which will definitely help in your sobriety journey. Being successful with sobriety is choosing humility. What do I mean by that? There's strength in acknowledging the need for help. Choosing humility and recognizing that I had a problem has made me successful in my sobriety journey. I didn't realize that I had a problem until I quit drinking. And then I realized how big of a problem I actually had when I started talking about it and you know, opening up more about it. And I was like, holy crap, I literally had a problem. Now the whole world knows I have a problem. That is a lot of humility right there. Telling the whole entire world and all my friends and family that yes, I had a problem when I was just trying to pretend I didn't have a problem because that's what you do in life, right? I was known as the drinker and I was the fun one. I was the party one. Go to Megan's house, get fudged up. And it was just a pattern that I did in life when people would be like, maybe you shouldn't have another drink or maybe you should stop drinking or can we not drink tonight? I would be like, who are you? What are you telling me? I don't want to listen to you. Now that I've let my defenses down, I realized that I literally had such a problem and I was hiding it. I was not facing it. I was just going on my own merry way until it was slapped in my face. Like, oh, hello, wake up, Megan. Having people come to me now with their problems and criticizing me now, like for how I used to be, it gives you more success to be sober when you realize how big of a shithead you were when you were wasted. Well, yes, people were criticizing me then, people are still criticizing me now, but it keeps me sober because people think that it is so stupid being sober, but yet some people thought it was stupid being drunk. Humility is hard for a lot of people. A lot of us don't like the criticism, the constructive criticism, and we just think that our way is our way and everybody else is the highway. Accepting how ridiculous we were when we were drinking, all those times when people would just, you'd get in fights with people because you drank too much and then you would blame it on them. But now looking back and now being sober, you can understand their side and be like, oh yeah, wow, 
I really was in a different state of mind and should have done a lot of things different moving forward. I don't ever want to be like that. That really helps the success in your sobriety journey is letting that humility just kind of like absorb inside of you and realize what you looked like when you were wasted. Were you falling down? Were you passed out? drunk every single night? Were you wasting away your kids' younger years? And were you missing basketball games, soccer games? Were you not being able to like, you know, fully engage with your family because all you wanted was alcohol? Opposition, keep digging. We have to outlast our critics. Throughout this journey, starting July 10th, everybody said, Megan can't do it. I said, BS, I'm gonna do it. Well, even my own husband was like, well, yeah, I give you three weeks. I was like, screw you. Like, I'm gonna make it. Like, I'm not gonna be the first one to fail 75 days. No, I can't, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fail at this. And then I got to 75 days and it was, well, you're gonna continue drinking, I bet. I bet you're, you can't wait to drink. You can't wait to have a drink. Oh, well, guess what? Almost seven months later, I definitely, put all those 75 day naysayers to rest. They're the ones that doubt you and they're the ones that don't think that you're going to be successful at anything. They're out there, they're waiting for you to fail. They wanna see you fail, they don't wanna see you be successful. Here I am almost seven months later and still people criticize me like, oh, you're not drinking? Oh, why can't you drink? Well, I can drink. I choose not to drink, that's more empowering. I keep digging out of those drunken trenches because I don't want to be that person anymore. I don't want to be known as the drinker and I want to keep pushing and letting those naysayers, I want them to start eating their words. I get some haters on here that think that all of us are losers for not drinking. Well, it's funny because now sober people are calling drunk people losers. We're all gonna criticize each other one way or another, but I would rather be criticized for being sober than a drunk. So keep criticizing me. You just keep pushing me to be more sober and sober and really never look back to drink ever again. The opposition part is why can't you just have one? Well, some of us can't just have one. Some of our mindsets have to do all or nothing. It's the whole bottle. It's not just one little sip. It's the whole freaking bottle and then it's plus some. We have people that are like, well, you can occasionally drink or socially drink. Okay, well, I did try socially drinking. It didn't work for me. Everybody has a different opinion from you and that's fine. I mean, you're gonna have your critics, you're gonna have people that don't have the same opinion as you and that's totally fine. The critics keep me digging away from alcohol because I do not want to be a drinker anymore. I choose sobriety and I choose it for so many reasons. Whether you like it or not, people just <laughs> constantly, people are like, well, you're a fuddy-duddy or I don't see why you can't just have one drink. It's just one little sip. Why can't you just have beer? Oh, wine's good for you. What in my, my mindset, even when I was pregnant, a little bit of red wine is good for you. It's good for your heart. It's not good for you. It is going to cause issues and no amount of alcohol is good for you. Screw everybody else and what they think. You're always gonna have a critic. Keep digging to that better life and stay sober. These aren't easy. Nobody said it's easy. If you can baby step into these structures, you will find immense relief. Staying the course, facing your troubles, choosing humility, keep digging and apologies. You will find so much relief. It will help you with your sobriety journey in many ways. Maybe you're not gonna succeed at all of them all at once but working on them step-by-step step is key to your success. Out of these five, which one do you think is the hardest to implement into your life?